there is no salvation. Welcome back to part two of the Anders and Jonas show. We're talking with Anders, solo developer of Scald, Jonas Antonsen, uh, boss man here. Boss man. Oh, no. Boss man here at Raw Fury. That's all right. They call me Far Far now, so whatever. It's all good. <laughs> final final level boss. Final level boss. Epic level. Uh, hopefully you saw series one. If you have not, go find it on wherever the heck we put it, because God only knows what we did with it. But you're going to enjoy it. It's good stuff. We talked about uh, Game of Thrones, uh, backgrounds for uh, how hard it is for a solo developer to make a classic RPG. And I think that really has sort of lit the candle for us talking about role-playing games and what happened to just... How did indie games move away to a spot where you get to make like the ultimate classic role playing game in 2022. We've been making indie games for a while now. This is not it's not a new space. Yeah, I think I would have to say that uh, like RPGs have taken a lot of time to catch up with other indie games. Mm -hmm. Like the first indie games, a lot of them weren't RPGs, um which I think mirrors a lot of the the movement in the game industry as a whole because you know RPGs back when when you had your first computer on us they were mostly RPGs because they could only do things that were turn based and based on textual input and you couldn't really do a lot of graphics with them and then as we got more advanced graphics and we got more 3D graphics and you know those bastards that at uh, it made doom <laughs> everything had to oh, well. be a 3D shooter <laughs> I mean, do you think it's Doom? I mean, my note down here actually is, oh my God, what did Final Fantasy VII and its, and its cinematic prodigies do to us? Well, I don't know if that's... Uh, I, well, in, in any case, I think that there was definitely a drive towards more action in games. Ah, so, we're, so you're, you're splitting it up. I was thinking oh, it's like it's this grandiose cinematic experience like we were talking about with like, you know, with making it into Star Wars. Like, it, every time I cast a spell, do I need a summon? Yeah, no, I think I think definitely uh, that definitely what has sort of changed uh, the position of role playing games from being kind of the grandfather of uh, or like the queen of gaming to being a very niche genre is that it is uh, it's difficult to make uh, an RPG that has mass appeal. Jonas, but first role playing game that stole your heart. We're gonna do this all three of us. First role playing game that really just got in there was like I got you. The, the the game that that really got me to like a level of oh my god this is insane yeah. was uh, a little game called Antband. I knew yeah I knew you were going yeah. this is what I was telling you about yeah, yeah, I know yeah, I yeah. told you we got rocket roll man it's uh it's it's probably one of the best RPGs the best dungeon crawlers it's it's the grandfather of Diablo basically yeah, yeah absolutely uh, <laughs> with, with 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 ASCII graphics, so you're basically yeah. playing uh, an an at sign at a screen, fighting yeah. small S's and big S's and yeah yeah yeah, and, yeah absolutely and green G's or red G's, um, and it's it's fucking amazing, it is a fucking amazing game, uh, because you know the, the, even those simplified graphics, I I I I've still I still run emulators of that game today, and I enjoy yeah. it just as much, because. Like it just plays on your fantasy, and and before you know it, you're there. Like you are, like the the game gets a hold of you. One hundred percent. So even if you're 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 doing this in ASCII, like uh, with dots and and G's and mm -hmm. at signs and stuff like that, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. The game experience is just it's magic. It's okay. one of the best experiences I've had. I've been wanting to talk to you about this for forever. Spell the name of this game for me because I can never find it when I'm looking for it. A N G. Uh huh. B A N D. Have you read Lord of the Rings? Yeah. It's the fortress of the Witch King mm -hmm. of Angmar. Isn't it? I think I think that's a reference, yes. Yeah, yeah, it is. it's definitely a Lord of the Rings reference. You know what? If that's where I get my card revoked, I'm okay with that. That's pretty good. <laughs> well done, well done. It's Thank not you in for the main book, it's in the appendix. It's can, in the you, appendix. You can totally take that. I mean, I, I didn't read the Slumarion either, so you can totally get me on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But here's where I wanted to get to. Is so, so, Jonas, the reason I wanted to say this is because I always thought Rogue was that game. So 1988 or so, mm -hmm. Garnet in college, sitting there with his Trash 80. Trash 80 was like, there was this company in, in uh, America called Radio Shack. They sold TRS 80s. <laughs> they had like a gray and white screen. And the game you would get with it, it came on, and sometimes you could buy it on a 10 and a half inch floppy. 10 and a half inch floppy. They went in vertically. And it was that game. 
Are you telling me that my game Rogue was actually a copy of yeah. Angbot? No, those no. are two different games. That's very difficult, yeah. actually. Rogue is uh, the first one, isn't it? Rogue is the first yeah. one. Angbot is more uh, kind of a... It is a different game, but it, uh -huh. it is definitely derived from yeah. Rogue in many ways. Okay. Uh, so, but, the, but the reason I didn't mention Rogue is is because it... I, I, First of all, I think Angband is a more obscure reference. Oh, it certainly uh, blew me away. And and secondly, it is uh, what what Angband does to Rogue is it brings kind of the dungeon crawling uh, and the uh, what is it called? Like basically, it, procedural generation. Yeah. Yeah. It brings that part in the foreground, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's just like you, you can you can play it endlessly and have fun. And it, it is literally the grandfather of the, what later became Di Diablo. And, and as far as I know, I think Angband is still being supported. Yes. I think it's still being. There's a huge community yeah, still yeah, yeah, today yeah, 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 like yeah. with all sorts of mods and updates. Absolutely. And like, and I thought Dwarf Fortress was old school. <laughs> no, no, no. Dwarf Fortress exists because of Angband. That's, that's what I was. That's where, yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. I'm going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know what the funny thing though is like, so Rogue for me was this time killer, but it didn't get me in the RPG space because it was more, I totally get like why Rogue Legacy works at the Rogue level because all Rogue was was dots and letters yeah. and you couldn't see <laughs> anything. And you and every step you took, you were like, please no M's, got no mm. Medusas, please. Yeah. Cause, Cause if you get the Medusa and then yeah. you're like, oh, what did I find? There's a little dot, there's a little dot. And they're like, it's a plus two dagger of poison. You're like, oh, that's not gonna, that's not really gonna help me that much. You, yeah. you get the same experience in Angband and, and my favorite, uh, I actually made my own t-shirt like 20 years ago, which was hard back then. Like mm -hmm. now you can go to the internet and like, you know, order find a service order, yeah, and like yeah. order. It was hard. I found like a silk printer in Reykjavik, Iceland, where I'm originally from. That's awesome. And I, I showed up with like uh, an image I had printed out of my like, uh, like uh, the, the school I was working or, or, or studying at at the time had like this ridiculous, ridiculously expensive like uh, Photo printer at the yeah, time. Yeah. So I showed up with like a, a photo printed image of, of a thing that I had designed, like you know, and it was uh, a reference to Angband, which was uh, and everybody that had played had has played that game knows that. So you would enter a level, and you had been having a great run, and you enter a level, and all of a sudden this text shows up. You can feel your luck changing. Oh, that did that rogue too, and you were like, "Oh God, yes. oh God!" Exactly. Vampires and Medusas, help! Exactly, and the, the, the sinking feeling of like, I know where this You're is like, going. But I've been playing for forty minutes. This was a good run. So yeah, so I made like uh, the, the character entering a level and the text showing up, like you can feel your. That's mind. awesome. Can we get that shirt? <laughs> can we get that shirt as a raw fury shirt? Because that is actually we should totally do that, man. That would be so cool. I think I need to put that phrase into skull somewhere. Oh, yeah. Well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that would be a really nice enter, You enter a dungeon, you can feel your luck time. Yeah, exactly. But did you, Angband, is that one of those games where you have to descend and then you have to ascend afterwards? You have to go first all the way down and then you have to go back up again. Isn't that in Angband? Yes, you can do that, yes. Is, is oh, Angband... I didn't know you could go back up in No, Rogue. but I think you I don't have... think you can't go back up in Rogue. Rogue is just No, Rogue going. is just, Rogue just down. Yeah, you just keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but can you still, can you beat Angband? Can you still beat it? I've never done so. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. This is this is where we need more than uh, our Norwegian yeah. uh, in this country because like when it comes to these sort of, like an Angband in particular, like his, okay. he is the wealth of experience. Uh, but but I just remember because it has such a, it had such an effect on me. But I was also uh, I'm a little younger than Martin, so I have my my memories are a little more shaky on, uh, on the experience. But but I think what's 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 an interesting discussion as well. The talking of Angband is how roguelikes have been having a pretty big resurgence mm -hmm. as indie games. Hey, you don't hold on. We yes. can come back to that. You don't get out of like telling us oh. what you. Yeah, I know what you were doing there. What was the <laughs> what was the role playing game that got you, my friend? I think. I think the first role-playing game that really got me in a way that I thought that, okay, this, yeah, like, this is not a jam. I yeah. think that was actually, so prefacing this by saying I'm a bit younger than you guys, I think it was <laughs> Might, Might and Magic 6 ah. is probably oh, the first was one. Was that the Light I, and Dark Side one? <clears throat> no, that's, that uh, that's World of Scene, that's 5. Oh, that's 5. Uh, oh, that's right, World of Scene, that was, oh, that was good too. Yeah, and then I retroactively went back and started like chewing through the catalog and playing mm -hmm. older role-playing mm -hmm. games after that. But I remember I was like, I was sick from school. My father was, uh, he was, he had a job where he was one of the few people who had a, a laptop computer. And uh, I, I like, I had a 
a strep thing in my throat or something like that and i just stayed home for a week and played my magic six and i, I just remember thinking okay this is mm -hmm. this is something special you know what? this is what i need to make i need to make like a wizardry might and magic clone in modern times because we're so, the people know, know what they were missing out from the steppers yeah. The steppers. We called them the steppers because, you know, like you had, yeah, you had yeah. graph paper. You're like, exactly. okay, went to the line there and the door there. And I go like, mine was, mine was Bard's Tale. Yeah. Oh, Bard's Tale was amazing. Yeah. Amazing game. And the reason it got me was it was the first time that I felt like I was translating my D&D &D characters to like a character roster. Yeah. You know, and like yeah. outfitting them. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I need my Bard. And if I had my Bard, I need my cleric. And like, you know, like putting it. Yeah, yeah. The party management element always got me. And that's a really interesting, also an aspect that has kind of disappeared completely. And it's not even in Skull, but it's sort of this idea of making the entire party mm -hmm. that you're playing with. Yeah. But yes. that, yeah. Because that, that never happens anymore. And obviously, I think that's because like the hurdle of sitting down and making characters for an hour is too too tall for a lot of people. Yeah, I'm I'm a full-fledged believer in that from someone who's gotten in, lost in Elder Scrolls character creators way yeah. too many. Yeah, and, yeah. I don't, and I don't mean just Elder Scrolls, but everyone since then emulating. It's like mm. I I actually get a little turned off, and I, I'm like, no, just just let me have a character that like I can go play. Yeah, but we've yeah. we've seen a uh, we've seen a backing away from that. Yeah, because uh, there was a, there was a point in time. Where the character creator, you you felt that it was almost equally as, as important as the game you were about to play. Do you remember when they're like giving you how big are the nostrils? Yes. How big is the distance between your lip and your nose? I'm like, the hell are you doing? I have, no, <laughs> I don't know. I, no, yeah. I I play like probably my favorite role playing game of all time is the Baldur's Gate series. Uh -huh. And one of the things that is very idiosyncratic about them is that you can actually have to roll your stats, mm -hmm. you, you know? And I have spent so long trying to get like a 97. And then you get it, <laughs> but you're so fatigued that you take it away. <laughs> you miss, <laughs> yes, you miss, yes, you get the weapon, but oh god, yes! Dude, PTSD has oh, so man, done that. Man. So how do you feel about their solution now of like, well, if you want to cheat, you can just add a few extra points. I don't like that. No. Yeah, it, it, it cheapens it. Yeah, I guess. I, I agree, and I, I think because you you, you just mentioned uh, like roguelikes uh, earlier, yeah. right? And because there's there's another resurgence happening there with with uh, with with, uh, and I think from software is probably the the best at this. Yeah, where they're stripping away actually some of the elements that are. A little bit like that that are more, too yeah. explicit that yeah. make it too easy yeah. that, that 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 push in your face like where are the all the hidden s treasures the hidden treasures yeah, are yeah, yeah. on on a on a map mm -hmm. that is basically given to you on at night and and the the over explaining tutorial and, and i think one of the biggest reasons for their success is that they've been stripping away those sort of elements getting back into that feeling of of uh, the sense of discovery and the sense of wonder and the yeah. sense of accomplishment of when you Absolutely. have to do this, right? It's work. Yeah. And and like there is this like moment of like yeah. you you hit it and you oh I almost I almost yeah, yeah, or yeah, 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 yeah. or you go over and you're like oh, no, I have to yeah absolutely. Another. and absolutely and there is a beauty to this. There is a reason, for example. I mean, most most RPGs, most uh, like stories. That like, and now I'm talking about like Lord of the Rings, whatever. Most RPGs, uh, tabletop or or or, or in, in in game form, uh, computer game form, um, they they all have grinding in them. Yeah. And why is grinding important? Grinding is important. Yeah. Why is grinding important? It's because it allows you to build up to the feeling of I achieved something. Absolutely. I got I got through the tedium and I achieved something. I yeah. broke up I broke on to the next level. But boy can it go wrong. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And this is why I I'm saying like this is why From Software is, is probably the at the forefront of, of going kind of this back in time, stripping away this a lot of these modern elements because they also understand how what what that means and how do you still design a great experience that is in a way intuitive but gives you back that kind of feeling of of reward and self yeah. like that that you are the driver that you are discovering that yeah. you are there's a sense of wonder there's a sense of progression there's a sense Absolutely. of and, and 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 this fascinates me and, and i i think that that, that, that uh, I, again, what I've seen from what you're doing, I think you have a very good grasp of, 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 of 
these sort of elements as well i think one of the one of the, like the big takeaways that we have sort of gotten from analyzing feedback from the prologue is that there are a lot of people who really appreciate this and i think we do sort of the grinding aspect well in the game but there is also a very clear subset who who really enjoy the narrative experience mm -hmm. and i think that to cater to them um it's not enough to just lower the difficulty because you also have to remove kind of the tedium so mm -hmm. so having customizable difficulty has always been like a big part of the game and it's not just about the difficulty but you can also tune certain aspect of the game such as turning off trash mob encounters so if you just want to play the game you don't want to get sort of dragged down in that sure. you can do that but that's not the intended experience but who am i to say how people are to yeah, enjoy but are, the are, game. So are you gonna are you gonna rubber band their levels so that they can such that they can pr proceed forward or how do you handle that uh, the, there there is some like the, the narrative of the game is not uh, is not terribly level gated and there is some uh -huh, cool. uh, there is some uh, dynamic uh, uh, difficulty scaling in the game as well okay. for the story aspect of the game meaning that you can play through the story in different ways uh -huh. um, so, so like the, the the main sort of design pillar of of, of uh, the progression for skull has always been to have a relatively short and compact game that you can speed run fairly quickly okay if it, you want to unconventional but but there is a world around that is so big and interesting and appealing that you will want to spend a lot more time in it and i think a game that you, you know you can hate it or you can love it but skyrim does this mm -hmm. skyrim has a very short and compact story you can run through it fairly quickly no one plays the game for the main story no you, or, or maybe you do it once oh yeah yeah That's or maybe, they play for. maybe you do it once but the point with playing like the main story of a game is that it, it's it's not as interesting to do the second time. So the second time you no, fire no. up the game, you're probably not in it for the main story. And then it's good to have a game that lets you go off and be a pirate instead yeah. <laughs> for, yeah. for 100 hours. So, so uh, and you know, like looking at, uh, you, like you say, oh, that's surprising. But like looking at a lot of RPGs and a lot of games that are long, they are only long because they they uh, they interpose the grinding between you and they force you to grind. I mean, I'm playing Xenoblade Chronicles still. I'm at 80 hours, level 70, and I'm at the final end yeah. of it, and I'm like, wait, you mean I was cakewalking through the last place I was yeah. grinding, but now I'm through the gate to the final boss, and I wish I had grinded more. This is just, it's, it's infuriating. I think I might... Don't think less of me, Internet World, but I think I'm going to go to easy mode and just finish the game. Yeah, exactly. And I think, like, if you're putting grinding in the game to artificially increase the game length, uh, I don't think that's good. I don't think that's good. Yeah, I don't even know the, I don't know the thought process behind why they would have done this the way they did. I mean, it's very old convention Japanese role Yeah, yeah, it right? is, it is. And that's uh, a whole different discussion about... But it's also about... tempered by World of Warcraft. Like, this is really interesting. Boy, I'm going to diverge because I wanted to sure. talk about Elden Ring stuff. But isn't it interesting how the way that the massively multiplayer online role-playing game changed the quest nature, quest structure of single-player games? Because all of a sudden they realized, oh, people like to go do fetch quests. Let's give them fetch quests. But then it went all off the rails because fetch quests, the only reason they work in an MMO is because I'm doing it with Anders and Jonas and we're fucking around yeah. in, a, yeah, in a dynamic yeah, 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 world. Exactly. Not because I'm doing it against a bunch of mobs that I'm just killing. Exactly. That's not fun. No, exactly. Exactly. And that's what you have to figure out how to conquer as a scenario and encounter and level progression and all those things in your game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I, I have, a, I have a, another kind of tangent uh, to go on and, and another question. Um, because, you know, you, 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 you just said that, that in Skull, the story is, is almost, it's equally as important yeah. to, to, uh, as to, to the mechanics and the, the RPG elements. A absolutely. So how much have you, like... Uh, how much work have you put into like that part of it? Have you like did you study like um, narrative structure? Did you st study how to build a story in 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 kind of in a way that that uh, makes sense in a world like this or like mm. yeah? So 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 uh, what's your progress there or process there? I think I think like the the big uh, so my background basically before making Skull is that. I, I was a game master for, for a long time, and I think I was a good game master as well. And so I spent a lot of time then thinking about sort of like narrative structure in the, in the way of sort of presenting narrative to people in a way that is, uh, that is uh, interesting. And that's probably the most important thing I'm taking into, 
into Scott as well. Uh, so, and, and beyond that, there is absolutely, like, I have done a lot of work sort of on the narrative structure of the game. And uh, this is, has kind of a very, very much like a, a diamond shaped narrative structure where the, mm. the game opens very narrow, uh, narrowly and then it sort of branches out and becomes very open and then it sort of converges on the end, which is sort of. Um, and, and then just beyond that, um, I think it's just a. A question of uh, like doing your best, showing it to people, taking feedback, and iterating. That's the most important thing, and that's why we're so super lucky with Skull because we have a really good community who's been very helpful in sort of testing the game and, and offering feedback. And, uh, yeah, it's important. It's, it's really yeah. important. We couldn't have done it without them. But the name Skull, uh, because uh, s s does Skull the word does it exist in the English language at all, or or is there a knowledge of what that word means? No, not S K A L D, and I assume that it does not mean getting burned by heat. No, 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 no. Um, it's only to do with shell. No, no, it means uh, it's basically like a a, a warrior poet yes. from the Norse uh, era. Nope, that is yeah. not nope. <laughs> so in Iceland we still use the word like very like uh, it, it's in regular use. Uh -huh. Skald. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But now it it uh, the warrior has kind of been taken out of the meaning, and now it means poet. Yeah. Basically. Exactly. Uh, but but yes, the original meaning of it is it's an old Nor uh, old Nordisk uh, mm -hmm. word. Yeah. Cool. For, for a Viking the warrior. PR agent, yes. Basically. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they were because now they... we're nerding up. <laughs> Absolutely, but come on down, get some awesome Viking stuff down here. <laughs> Let me sing to you about it. I, I think like uh, uh, probably it hasn't been like a challenge, but like it may give the impression that the game has like more Norse roots mm -hmm. than it does because the game doesn't. Yes, no, uh, exactly. The game the, there there is sort of no Norse mythology in it, and uh, but I, but I still like the Skald has. A place in the setting because like from from inside the setting there is uh definitely like a feeling of sort of like a declining empire and sort of the transfer of knowledge from written sources that are kind of being lost to oral sources is one of the themes of the setting well i mean if uh, if uh, scold was a, a D, D class it would be like a, a, a warrior bard i guess yeah i guess i guess i guess and so, so, the, so it definitely is something that I exists. think in series five that's a minstrel. <laughs> that's totally a joke. But isn't there? I think there are skulls. Uh, no, but there may, might be skulls in Pathfinder. I think at least, but maybe not in in, in core D and D. But uh, yeah. No, but but this this actually like uh, I, I bring this up because uh, you you just nailed it. It kind of when we were looking at the game for the for, for the, the, the in the very beginning. That kind of threw me off because, like, for me, the word "skald," yeah, yeah. Uh, and and I don't I don't think that resonates for anyone that's out outside of the Nordics or, no. or not. Like, but for me, I was expecting like, oh, this is like uh, Viking mythology, yeah. Yeah. like uh, that. No, it's not. But uh, but I, I can I can understand why you use the word because it is a very um, descriptive word of of that like, might be more tied to the world and the story that you're trying to 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 create and, and tell. Rather than the the, the 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 origins of the word in, in our mythology, right? Yeah, exactly. So I'm basically thinking that we can absolutely emancipate uh, the yes. word, <laughs> and wow. uh, and still that there is still uh, like there is enough of an overlap, and and there is also obviously a thing that I'm like I, I'm also a Norwegian storyteller, so it resonates on that level, and it's sort of it's uh, it's short, uh, it's easy to remember, even even though most Americans maybe don't know what it means. <laughs> but so, but you're navigating. So Anders, I'll go back to something we talked about in the first segment, which was that you're navigating this desire to have a unique take on fantasy, while at the same time pulling elements from classic Norwegian storytelling, from uh, Viking lore, and still trying to keep it grounded in a computer role playing game system that people understand. What is your, uh, because we use this term, all, I use one of those terms that we use all the time. What is your North Star for guiding the fantasy world of Skald? Um, we talked a little bit about that earlier, but definitely there but I'm are. Still trying to, that's what I'm saying. I'm still trying to put my head around it because it's so many things, but you, clear, you clearly know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> that's weird. But, it's, uh, like, but put some words to it because it's hard to get. Is this where you like cover the camera? Like, no, no. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> You're seeing the sausage being made. This this interview is over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I asked the right questions. 
No, but but, but I, I think that there are a lot of things that go into a lot of things, and some of them are big, some of them are small, mm -hmm. and it's basically it comes down to identifying them and staying true to them, whilst also realizing, okay, this is a baby we can throw out with the bathwater. This is this is we can mm -hmm. cut this, but this is something we're not changing. And so uh, you know there are a handful of things that are like pillars of the game. So like the the low fantasy setting, the uh, eschewing of sort of the traditional fantasy tropes leaning maybe more into sort of other liter literary tropes there are some science fiction tropes in the game not being afraid to sort of step into that area but you still have to have magic yeah absolutely and this is one of those things where if scald like if if this world was presented in the for in the form of a fantasy novel for mm -hmm. instance it would likely look different than in the game because i've had to make some concessions with the magic system because the magic system needs to be implementable and it needs to be yes. crunchy and chunky and juicy for people to play with and you need to be able to to sort of use a targeting template and then fireball someone up there and it's just one of those things that you you can't you can't not have it in a fantasy game or at least i'm not willing to take sort of take the struggle of not including it in the fantasy right. game yeah I mean, so so it, it becomes more a question of kind of trying to 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 talk about fantasy because in a lot of fantasy games you almost get the impression that the game just sort of sidesteps any discussion about like hmm, why are people dying in this world when anyone can cast a healing spell yeah you know there are a lot of questions like that where it becomes uh, that is an interesting uh, question isn't it yeah it is an interesting question yeah, so, or where you have like a spell of resurrection or yeah like, right like, uh, exactly so I think, like wait i got a phoenix down wait why can't i have more of these phoenix downs these are pretty awesome <laughs> why isn't this put in a system somehow <laughs> like so uh so uh yeah, yeah. So we do have a magic system. Absolutely, there is yes. magic in the game, um, and and there's a great deal of passion right now in the space for tactical, for very tactical, crunchy. You, I know you put a crunchy combat, and absolutely. so clearly that has to factor into you want players to play the game. Absolutely, and so you have to figure out how to strike this balance. Like, how do you come? Up, how do you come at that? I, I I think that I think that we will. It's like. Uh, it's really important to have crunchy tactical combat. Mm -hmm. If the combat isn't good, the game isn't good. That's just how it is. And so, even though that means we, we, we would have to make some concessions, we would just have to compensate for it in the narrative because the combat has to work. If that means we have to put fireballs in the game, we put fireballs in the game. Yeah. That's just how it goes. Uh, and th then, but, but at the same time, there are things like happening in the setting um, that are commenting on well, maybe it's not a good idea that people are throwing fireballs, and there is obviously like a environmental uh, aspect uh, that's a, that's a, that stops them from throwing fireballs, or like influences the situation. This is actually one of my my favorite things because, like, I I, I thought a lot about this uh, uh, many 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 moons ago, because a lot of fantasy uh, and especially magic and fantasy is reliant on the use of of, of, of fire right it's yeah the fireball sure. is kind of that you know it's, it's, it's the, the thing it, it's Everyone the wants essence to throw of a fireball. yes exactly yeah. but how does fire work if you would shoot a fireball in a closed space what happens to the oxygen in that space yeah you exactly. cannot breathe you are going to suffocate and die even if you're the cat like this is like those sort of elements Absolutely. just talking about like yeah, the no, no, yeah, yeah, magic yeah, yeah, you're yeah, kidding yeah, yeah. me i'm gonna be like i'm gonna teleport out of there or or if you you'd fire a um let, let's say a magic missile in uh in in a storage room that had held a lot of barley and grain yeah right? that, that's that's gonna light up like a power keg yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, i don't know what you're talking about i don't know what you're talking about but these have always fascinated me like these these sort of hidden elements that are never addressed really in, in so much of, of of kind of fantasy stories and settings absolutely and, and like they, they can drive me up the wall you're, you're <laughs> blowing up one of the things i was thinking about because i was thinking earlier when you were talking about elden ring like one of the things i love about i like mm. role-playing games that skew more towards the deterministic side yeah and by that i mean like when i'm playing elden ring a significant amount of my success is determined on my my accuracy and ability to wield the controller right versus a Baldur's gate or, or, or you know, any Divinity 2, something like that. It's all down to how did I build, build up my build, how I position my players. Like, there's so many things that I have feel like I'm in control of, and those were deterministic outcomes. Um, and so that, so that really changes the game for me. And I lost my train of thought on where I was going with that, other than that, that's why I like this sort of game. I like this sort of game because I want to be in charge. I want to feel like I have the control over what I'm doing with it. Not, I don't want to feel like it's taken away. You know what's good at this? Not remember where I was going. Deus Ex. Mm. Warren Spector's mm. Deus Ex mm. because it looked 
like a first person shooter. It walked like a first person shooter. And no matter how much you played it, you always knew, way better even than Fallout 3 or 4, that every time you took an action, there was so much going on in the background yeah. based off of how you built your character. It's a legendary RPG. For that reason. Yeah, I mean, yes. also for the narrative, but because you, you felt so meaningful in how, it, how, how you built your character. And one of the things that Deus Ex did so well is that they, they were very comp uh, competent at providing you a sandbox and even not caring so much, like even letting you cheat a little bit, like using landmines <laughs> to create ladders on the walls, for instance. Sure. You, like that probably wasn't by design, but it doesn't matter. It's really, really. Mm -hmm. It was. It's all good. Um, so yeah, absolutely. But is the is DSX the reason that uh, in the latest build we saw from you, uh, you've decided to revert to making the game as a first person shooter? <laughs> <laughs> well, I need the ray tracing, <laughs> so so uh, yeah. DLSS now active. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Well, it's a good, good question about where the boundary goes between uh, action RPGs, RPGs, and turn-based stuff. You don't, but you know where you're lying. But you're still doing great storytelling. Absolutely. It's definitely a narrative RPG, but built on a very strong systemic, um, like on a very strong system. That's always been the idea for the engine mm -hmm. that I'm making, is to make an engine that is systemically strong, so strong that you could probably even peel off all the narrative stuff and basically make like what Icewind Dale is to Baldur's Gate, mm -hmm. which is basically Baldur's Gate with no story. <laughs> Almost sick burn. <laughs> no, I, I love Icewind Dale, but for a completely different reason than why I love Baldur's Gate. And that's why, because like if, well, a lot of people don't like the Infinity Engine games, but if you do like them, then you could also play them like with less narrative. And, and that's sort of been the idea when making Skull, is to like build a very solid foundation. So and did then, you like the SSI Goldbox games? I, I, I do like them, but I'm too young to have played them when I was oh, young, so I don't yeah. have the muscle memory. Mm -hmm. So when playing them now, I bounce off them a little bit because like, uh, and so there are contemporary games that I can play that I love playing because I played them when I was young and I have them in my fingers. But the Goldbox games, I don't. So, so for me, they're a little bit like, oh, I, I, can't, I can't deal with this, <laughs> all the buttons and. But, but maybe, maybe as, a, as a last question, because you, you bring up such a great point that, that one of the things you are creating, and again, solo developer, you're, you're creating your own uh, engine, basically. Yeah, absolutely. So, so in the future, the plan is then to make more and make like further games based on your own engine and kind of take take this revitalization of the, the RPG, old school RPG genre to the next step and, and, and churn out more of those bad yeah. boys. Well, 100% that is, that is the plan, both in terms of sort of the way we're positioning the IP, the intellectual property, but also the technology <clears throat> and i say technology and it sounds like it's very advanced but it's just it's just a game engine basically but i i really 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 love working with this and i would like i'm not the kind of guy who i'm i'm not just like waiting to finish this so i can go and make another game in another genre i want to make role playing games and i want to make them in this this universe that i'm writing and uh, that's, uh, yeah, so that's definitely the... I love that. Yeah, that's good to hear. <laughs> that's good to hear. So uh, hopefully we will have uh, many more uh, streams like this. A long many journey more. ahead. Yeah. All the way into Mordor. <laughs> I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll hold you to that. Or out of Mordor. <laughs> Jonas, you saw this thing uh, some time ago and you, it lit your eyes up. Close this out with like what you saw and what you hope he's going to deliver here when, it's, when this game launches. Well, I mean, we, we touched upon this uh, in, a, in a conversation we had just before the, the stream uh, or before the recording. Um, so I have uh, an older son who is 17. And over the last couple of years, he's started to read a lot of fantasy books. And they are uh, there are a new breed of fantasy books in many ways. It's uh, called like a, it's a genre of books called uh, lit, lit RPG or literary RPG. Okay. And it's interesting because in many ways it's a callback to like old school fantasy storytelling. But the novel part is that the characters in the books are self-aware of the system that is like that mm. that is underbuilding the world. They know their own stats. They know their abilities. They know, like, they, they choose how to level up and, uh, like, take a class or whatever. 
So they're self-aware of the, the, the very systematic world that they live in, in and, and then the fantasy story on top is, is told very, very well. And, and this has been a way of, of connection between me and my, my, my older son is, is uh, me starting to read that the, these kind of same books and, and, and same things. And, <clears throat> and I've taken a huge interest in like I'm reading them now for not, not just that purpose, but, but actually <laughs> because I like them. Yeah. And I think it's, a, it's just a super interesting and, and it tickles this, this, uh, this lit RPG genre tickles in me a very strong sense of. So for me, it's nostalgia. For for my my son, he is it's his he is discovering a thing I discovered yeah. like thirty years ago or almost thirty years ago, mm -hmm. right? So he's going through the sense of discovery. I'm going through the nostalgia. So when I I uh, when I saw Skull for the first time, the what what I absolutely loved was how how powerfully it pulled on my nostalgic strings, but at the same time how it's kind of reimagining uh, a lot of things that, that are, are different and are modern and are, are, are like uh, have been modernized by, by you in, in making the game. And this is why I think it's actually going to have a dual audience. I think it's going to have people like me and, and you, Garnet, probably that will play it because uh, the nostalgia, the, that's the pull. Uh, and then, of course, it's just a fucking amazing game. So that's going to be the, the staying power. But then I think it's going to pull in another audience, which is uh, the, the, the audience that, that is interested, ha has rediscovered tabletop gaming through literary RPG, like through that, that flood of, of kind of modernizing the RPG world, first from the literary, literary perspective, then rediscovering the, the, uh, the tabletop, and then coming back to uh, computer games. And I think that there will be a dual audience for the game, that is, uh, one, one on one hand, it's gonna be us, the old bastards, and then it's gonna be uh, young kids. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I certainly hope so. That Anders, you're doing great, man. It's, I mean, I'll, I'll give you my props for, mine's really short. I want to play this game because I know that when I sit down and play this game, my imagination will be a 50-50 partner with what you've made as I'm imagining what's happening in this world through the systems, through the fiction that you've written, but also getting wrapped up in your world. Thank you, so much. Good thank you so much, Garnet. And Jonas. We hope you guys really uh, that. will enjoy this experience. Uh, thank you guys. Great stuff. Uh, Jonas, thanks, of course, taking time out to be with us. Anders, thanks for coming down from the far north north regions. Uh, this, this man lives way up there in the cold stuff. Like, wow. <laughs> he's, he's a very brave, brave soul. Next to Santa's workshop, right? It's just uh, okay, now you see, yeah, now it's you about made me look seven silly. hours drive. <laughs> north of there. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Uh, we hope you have a lot to look forward to with Scald. In the meantime, please come over to the Steam page where you can find this man interacting with you in the discussion forums. And please wishlist it there on Steam. It helps us uh, know how many of you are out there excited about the game. And we look forward to playing with it, playing the game, and talking about it with you. Bye-bye.